What's up, everyone? So, um, second lesson that we're going to cover is acceleration. Uh, there are a couple videos that we're going to watch, like a video of a peregrine falcon. All right, pretty cool. A little death action of a poor pigeon. But uh, the essential question here is how can we describe changes in motion? So with this, we have two key vocabulary words. We have velocity, which we just covered. Remember, velocity is displacement over amount of time. Um, we also include the direction when we're talking about velocity. If you have uh, speed, but you have no direction, you just have speed. So in order to have velocity, we have to have speed in a given direction. Uh, remember, velocity is a vector, meaning that we have both an amount and a direction. Uh, so velocity is the speed of something in a specific direction. A uh, vector is a measurement that tells us both how much and which direction. Velocity is a vector and acceleration is going to be a vector as well. Speed is not. So our first topic is what is acceleration? This will be on your test. This is another good thing to write down. So. Acceleration is a vector which measures the rate at which an object's velocity changes over a period of time. Remember, a rate is just how much uh, something changes in a given amount of time. In this case, we're looking at how much speed changes in a certain amount of time. So here we have a drawing of a boy. He's running to kick a soccer ball. We'll call this boy Carlos. All right, so we have Carlos running to kick a soccer ball. All right. The boy accelerates to catch up to the ball over five seconds. His velocity increases from two meters per second to five meters per second. So he starts off slow and he picks up speed all right, in a time of five seconds. So we're going to find out how we can solve for acceleration in a little bit later. All right. There are three ways that something can accelerate. One, it can speed up. So here we have a bat. He's kind of chilling. He's a happy bat. He's a cute bat. He might be the bat that started the coronavirus. We don't know. Um, but he's just chilling. And then over time, we see that this bat begins to speed up. We call that speeding up accelerating. All right? If you're sitting at a red light, the red light turns green. Your mom and dad push the gas, right? We say that they accelerate. You're playing need for speed. I don't know. Whatever. You're accelerating. You're going faster. You're increasing your speed. Something can also accelerate as it slows down. I know you're thinking like, that's not accelerating, that's slowing down. We call that deceleration, all right? Still a type of acceleration, it's just slowing down. So here we have a snail. We'll call him turbo, because obviously at one point he was going a lot quicker than snails go. So he was going fast and then he begins to slow down. Slowing down is also a form of acceleration. And then lastly, something can accelerate as it changes direction. This little bumblebee does a little loop-de-loop, -loop, all right? and therefore he changes direction. So three ways that something can accelerate. It can speed up, it can slow down, it can change directions. You can use a baseball as an example of all three of those. Before the pitcher ever winds up, that ball is sitting still, all right? As the pitcher begins to throw the ball, the ball goes into motion, it speeds up, okay? The batter is here, we'll call him Reed Bradbury, all right? Once he makes contact with the baseball, he's going to cause the baseball to change directions. All right? It was once traveling this way, now it's hopefully traveling that way. All right? That change in a direction is also a form of acceleration. As the ball begins to sail, eventually it's going to run out of energy, hit the ground, and slow down. That is also a form of acceleration. We're either going to call it negative acceleration or deceleration. All right. What is the formula for average acceleration? Take the object's final velocity minus the initial velocity and divide it by time that's passed to find acceleration. So acceleration equals our final velocity minus our initial velocity. So the final speed we were traveling minus the initial speed we were traveling over the time that that change took place. So if the car begins going 60 miles per hour, it finishes at 100 miles per hour, and it took two seconds to do so, we can solve for acceleration. Our acceleration, according to this, would be 100 miles per hour minus 60 miles per hour divided by 2 seconds. All right, 
60 miles per hour minus, or 100 miles per hour minus 60 miles per hour divided by 2 seconds. We'll see this in the next slide as well. All right, so acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So acceleration equals 100 miles per hour minus 60 miles per hour divided by 2 seconds. So acceleration equals 40 miles per hour divided by 2 seconds. 40 miles per hour divided by 2 seconds will give us an acceleration of 20 miles per hour per second. Sorry. 20 miles per hour per second. So the car's velocity is increasing 20 miles per hour each second. So as each second passes, that car is going 20 miles per hour faster than it was previously going the second before. What are the units for average acceleration? Recall the units for velocity is a distance over time. So when we're looking at velocity, velocity units are things like meters per second, centimeters per second, kilometers per hour. Those are all types of metric measurements. Um, you guys are most familiar with miles per hour. So it's a unit of distance over a given amount of time. When it comes to acceleration, it's a change in velocity over a unit of time. Therefore, the unit of acceleration will end up being uh, meters per second per second. All right, because we are dividing our speed by another time. So we're dividing meters per second by second. So meters per second divided by seconds will give us meters per second per second, which is meters per second squared. All right. Or in this case, centimeters per second per second. Remember, we read that line as per. So centimeters per second per second is the same as centimeters per second squared. All right, the average acceleration is a change in velocity over a unit of time. Usually that time is seconds. Therefore, the acceleration can be kilometers per hour per second or miles per hour per second. All right, so we're going to try a few examples. A cheetah, spelled with an H, all right? A cheetah is the fastest accelerating land animal on the planet. It accelerates from zero miles per hour to 60 miles per hour in three seconds. Calculate the rate of acceleration, all right? Our initial is zero miles per hour. Our final is 60 miles per hour. And the time that we're looking at is, an, is a time of three seconds. So to set it up, Again, acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time. So our final was 60 miles per hour minus our initial, which was 0 miles per hour, divided by time, which is 3 seconds. So 60 miles per hour minus 0 miles per hour gives us 60 miles per hour over our unit of time, which is 3 seconds. So 60 miles per hour divided by 3 seconds gives us 20 miles per hour per second. So every second this cheetah is going 20 miles per hour faster than it was the previous second. A selfish accelerates super fast as it jumps out of the ocean. It accelerates from a swim at 10 kilometers per hour to a leap of 110 kilometers per hour in three seconds. That joker is fast. All right, calculate the rate of acceleration. So still, same thing. Our um, final velocity minus our initial velocity divided by time. So our final is 110 kilometers per hour. Our initial is 10 kilometers per hour in a time of three seconds. <coughs> so final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Again, acceleration equals final velocity was 110 kilometers per hour. Initial was 10 kilometers per hour in a time of three seconds. So we have 110 minus 10 divided by 3. So 110 kilometers per hour minus 10 kilometers per hour gives me 100 kilometers per hour over a time of 3 seconds. Now it is very important to make sure that your units are the same. Um, if we were looking at kilometers per hour versus meters per hour, you would need to make sure that you converted so that you had the same units. Alright, so pay attention to that. So acceleration equals 100 kilometers per hour over 3 seconds. Once we divide that out, we get 33.3 kilometers per hour per second. So every second, that selfish is going 33.3 kilometers per hour faster than it was the previous second. All right, quick watch before we watch this pair, or before we saw for the peregrine falcon video or problem, we're going to watch a video on the peregrine falcon. Falcon killing a pigeon.
first we're going to see an ad of puppy dogs. Oh, just kidding. Uh, I want to hear it, but I don't think I, I don't think we have sound until this video is over. Aww. So cute. Not that one. You're not that cute. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Here we go. The true superpowered king of speed is about to clobber one of these pigeons. A peregrine falcon may chase a pigeon in one of two ways. The first method is the flat-out chase. Sometimes it works, but pigeons are fast too. And when jostling back and forth with a peregrine in this mode, prey will occasionally slip away. When this happens, the peregrine can recalibrate and switch to method number two. It's called the rapid stoop, the dive bomb. The attack begins slowly, then gradually picks up speed. Its wings tucked in. The Falcon is approaching 200 miles per hour. It is now the fastest animal on the planet. Against this super-powered speed, the Pigeon is defenseless. It's tough to hide from an attack like that. All right, so the peregrine falcon is the world's fastest animal, uh, which is assisted by gravity when it dives. We saw it dive and that pigeon, but um, the ex it accelerates from fly at 20 miles per hour to a dive at 240 miles per hour in just five seconds. So some of you thought rock and roller coaster was fast. The Falcon? Got nothing on that. So uh, calculate the rate of its acceleration. So again, we take the final velocity minus the initial velocity over time. So the final velocity is 240 miles per hour minus the initial velocity, which is 20 miles per hour, divided by the time it takes to do that which is five seconds. So 240 miles per hour minus 20 miles per hour gives me 220 miles per hour. And again, our time is five seconds. So 220 miles per hour over five seconds, uh, 220 divided by five is 44 miles per hour per second. So every second this Falcon is going 44 miles per hour faster than it was the previous second. All right, what are deceleration and negative acceleration. So regardless of direction, deceleration always means the object is slowing down. Deceleration and ne negative acceleration are going to be the same thing. It's just uh, two different ways to say it. So negative acceleration just means slowing down. Deceleration is slowing down as well. So the car decelerates quickly to avoid driving off the cliff. Hopefully. All right. So we want that car to slow down, to negative accelerate, and so forth. All right, not to be confused with negative acceleration, which means one of two things. Decreasing speed in the positive direction, so if it's going this way, it's slowing down in the positive direction, or increasing speed in a negative direction. Remember we looked at that number graph? 
Um, so I kind of told you a little wrong there, but if we have negative acceleration, we're accelerating uh, to the left at a quick rate on that number graph. If you can think back to the previous section where we had the cars and the gas pump, it would be going to the left at a fast rate. All right, so we're either slowing down or we're going um, in the opposite direction, in the negative direction very quickly. In this case, the car is decreasing speed in the positive direction, so it has negative acceleration. Uh, so what does having zero acceleration mean? Remember that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity over time. So acceleration, three things, speeding up, slowing down, changing direction. So what would it mean if an object had zero acceleration? The satellite is traveling the same speed in the same direction. Its velocity is constant, therefore it has zero acceleration. All right. If I'm walking one mile per hour north, I'm going to have to continue to walk one mile per hour north forever All right. in order to have zero acceleration. I can't turn to the right, I can't turn to the left. If I'm on my bicycle, I can't push the brakes. I have to go one mile per hour north forever to have zero acceleration. It does not mean that the object is not moving. It can be moving. It can also not be moving, a rock that just sits there forever. All right. But in this case, this flying saucer, which may or may not exist, all right, uh, would be going north at one second per whatever, all right, forever. Not changing direction, not speeding up, not slowing down, going the same speed forever. Um, so now you guys are going to practice what you learned. There's going to be a sum it up. You'll find that on Canvas. Your test again will be in Google Classroom. So all of your like homework or all of the practice problems will be in Google Classroom. All of your tests, I mean, will be in Canvas. So sorry, practice problems, Canvas, test, Google Classroom. Remember, in Google Classroom, it is a locked browser, but you are free to use any notes or practice problems that you've done previously in Canvas on this, or any notes that you took over this video, you can use that on your test as well. What you cannot use is your cell phone or your buddy, unless you want to have a guilty conscience from here on out. Like, Ms. Shelton hooked us up, didn't make us do a million edge elastic, and here I am cheating. I am a scumbag. I am gum on the bottom of someone's shoe. All right, if that's you, don't be lame, all right? Don't be lame. Don't be that person. So, hope you guys are having a good day. See you later.